Do you drive an Alfa Romeo equipped with a 1.75 TBI engine and frequently hear a noticeable rattling noise when starting the engine cold? Or perhaps you're experiencing issues with timing synchronization or noticing oil on the timing belt? All of this could indicate potential issues with the camshaft timing gear and its prices can really catch you off guard unexpectedly. I'm Olivier from Mihenker. For many, many years, I've been restoring and producing camshaft timing wheels for a wide range of engine brands. Some time ago, we started the process of restoring camshaft timing wheels for the Alfa Romeo 1.75 TBI engine, which can be found in models like the Brera or the 4C. Unfortunately, the regeneration turned out to be not very effective. And why? Mainly because very often the wheels that reached us were already in such a poor condition that properly restoring them wasn't really feasible or worth the effort, that there was essentially nothing left to save. That's why we came up with a specific solution, which I'll explain to you in more detail a bit later on. Now let's take a deeper dive into discussing the construction, working principle, and typical faults often linked to the camshaft phasers in this specific engine design. This is what a typical cylinder head for the 1.75 TBI engine looks like. Here we have two camshaft phasers. The intake phaser operates within a range of 30 degrees in total, while the exhaust phaser functions within a total range of 25 degrees. In the vast majority of cases, the cam phasers remain firmly locked in their default positions and stay entirely stationary during engine startup as well as throughout the entire idle speed operation and beyond. Only when there is a need for increased torque or power output do the phasers start to engage and make the necessary adjustments. The standard position for the intake cam is determined when the shaft consistently remains in a retarded state. Similarly, the standard position for the exhaust cam is confirmed when the shaft consistently stays in an advanced state. Each phaser is equipped with its own control solenoid valve. Here we have the solenoid valve for the exhaust cam shaft, and over here is the one for the intake cam shaft as you can see. This solenoid valve is made up of several distinct sections, which I've clearly marked here in blue, red, and green for better clarity and understanding. The middle section, marked in blue, is the oil supply, which is essential for the valve's proper operation. Here, oil comes directly from the oil pump. When the electrosaur is turned off, and the wheels remain in their default positions, as I mentioned, meaning in neutral and during startup, the oil is redirected from this blue section to the red section. So the wheels, right from the moment of startup and even during idle operation, are constantly and continuously supplied with oil without any interruptions. Only during the activation of the variable valve timing system, when the engine control unit sends the command to switch the wheel, the oil is then redirected from the central blue section to adjust the valve timing accordingly, meaning from the supply to the green section. This section indicates the engagement, the activation of the variable valve timing wheel mechanism. At that point, the intake wheel is accelerated, while for the exhaust wheel, we proceed to deliberately retard the camshaft timing by a specific, calculated degree. The previous section, the red one, is connected to this central opening, which has been specifically designed to function as the primary ventilation system. The used oil, the unnecessary oil from the previous operating cycle, is expelled each time through this specific opening directly back into the engine head unit. Now let's take a look. At the valve cover, the oil from the oil pump is carefully directed through these specific openings in the cylinder head and here in the valve cover, where it flows into the control solenoid valves for precise and efficient operation. From there, it's then distributed to individual sections. As I mentioned, the oil from these sections, directly from the solenoid valves, flows next to the first bridge, which is positioned closest to the timing phaser, ensuring smooth lubrication and optimal engine operation. Here we have the exhaust camshaft bridge, and here we have the intake camshaft bridge. I have marked them with colors as you can see. The corresponding holes for each section clearly indicating the flow paths. Here we have the engagement section, and over here we have the disengagement section. The same setup applies in this part as well, just like before. From that point. When the engine is running at idle speed, and the wheel remains in its default position, the oil from the solenoid valve gets redirected straight into this red section. Let's refer to it as the disengagement section. Then, when? It becomes necessary to activate the wheel. The oil is redirected and flows directly into the green section, commonly known as the engagement section. Oil from the disengagement section flows directly here into these three holes, which are highlighted in red, and actually 
into this specific groove located right here. Oil from the engagement section, which means when we activate the camshaft phase wheel, flows directly from this groove into the central hole in the shaft, ensuring proper lubrication. And from there, via the screw. That features a through hole here. It flows directly into the camshaft phase wheel mechanism. So in this case, we have two oil supply paths. Here we have the distributed camshaft wheels, both intake and exhaust. Each camshaft wheel is made up of four individual components. The front plate, the rear plate, the housing and the rotor, along with the blades, as well as the piston, which is equipped with a spring. As I mentioned earlier, each camshaft pulley remains in its default position during the engine's initial startup phase every time. For the intake pulley, it's adjusted to the retarded position, and for the exhaust pulley, it's set in the advanced position, in these specific positions. The oil from the solenoid valve is being redirected from the blue channel over to the red channel. Take a look at the scavenge wheel as an example. As soon as we start up the engine, the oil immediately fills up this chamber right here, applying pressure or even causing it to shift slightly further along the mechanism. The rotor of the VVT wheel is adjusted to the position of maximum delay, essentially meaning it's rotated fully in the counterclockwise direction. Only when the wheel is activated does the oil get redirected to the green channel, allowing the oil to flow into the green chamber on this side of the blades, which then facilitates the necessary adjustment process. Specifically in the case of the scavenge wheel, moving it entirely and fully in the direction of acceleration. When these chambers are empty, such as during a cold engine start, the wheel is securely held in its position by the locking mechanism, specifically this piston right here. This ensures stability and prevents any movement until the oil flow is fully restored and operational. This piston is securely held in place by this pocket. Only once the system is fully filled with oil does the piston retract, unlocking the mechanism, and the camshaft phase wheel is then maintained in its position exclusively through the combined forces of the camshaft's inertia and the hydraulic pressures acting within the system, in the lubrication system. The exhaust side wheel works in exactly the same way, except that the exhaust side wheel in its base position remains in a continuous state of acceleration, ensuring the vanes consistently apply full pressure firmly and steadily pushing it in the clockwise direction without any interruption or delay. The distinctive rattling noise that occurs during startup is primarily caused by a malfunction in the locking mechanism, specifically this plunger right here. Over time, the locking pocket, this specific area right here, gradually wears out. Do you notice this distinct polishing in this particular spot? That is exactly wear and tear. At that stage, the piston fails to latch correctly and doesn't maintain the starting position during the engine ignition process. At that point as well, when the oil chambers are completely empty, the rotor starts to swing back and forth rapidly, producing a distinct and noticeable rattling sound. Next, a very significant malfunction, also causing rattling, but typically during operation or when descending from high revs, is the excessive play in the blades. So these blades over time develop quite a bit of sideways play, like this. When we pull out such a blade, you can clearly see how much wear occurs over time due to constant movement, friction, and the natural aging process of the material. In this particular situation, there's really nothing you can do about it at all. Another very crucial factor that affects the tightness of the entire system is the wear of the rear plate. Here you can see such wear. It's caused by friction and primarily lubrication issues. The greater the wear, the larger the leaks become over time, another component that gets damaged are the outer diameters of these valve mechanisms. Do you see this specific spot here? It's very easy to see precisely where the friction and wear occurred over time. Here, very significant oil leaks also occur, which directly influence the functioning of the entire system. And here is the solution to the problem. At Mihanker, we determined that since regeneration isn't a viable option, it would be far better to develop an entirely VVT gear, especially since we have a lot of experience in this area. It wasn't an easy task, but we're especially proud because take a look at what we've achieved. Completely redesigned structure, much more simplified, significantly stronger and far more efficient than the original version. We've cut leakage significantly and improved efficiency beyond the original wheel's performance. Let's take a look inside. 
The Mahenker timing wheel is significantly simpler in its construction. It doesn't consist of four main parts, but instead is made up of just three components. Here we have the housing, the rotor along with the locking element, and the rear plate. As you can see, our rotor features integrated blades, enhancing both efficiency and overall design simplicity. The entire rotor is a single component, and since there are no separate blades, unlike the original, there's no risk involved here. Vibrations are wear on those blades. Additionally, our locking mechanism is significantly and substantially larger. But it's not just about the appearance. In just a moment, I'll show you how we carefully test every single wheel we produce. Every fast roast wheel produced by Mihenker goes through a thorough test on this device right here. This is the one and only testing facility in Poland that's specifically designed for fast roast government wheels in hot oil. It facilitates the accurate simulation of the driving conditions that take place in your vehicles, especially during periods of intense heat or extremely low temperatures. Each wheel is meticulously tested and inspected for proper leaks, ensuring it meets the required standards, generates the correct torque, and delivers reliable performance under all driving conditions. That's exactly how the VVT wheel operates. As you can notice, its working speed isn't especially quick or rapid at all. This is directly connected to the fact that the oil right now is quite cool, as it's only 38 degrees. You'll see in a moment how quickly it starts functioning as the oil heats up. The difference is clearly visible to the naked eye. After the test, each wheel is marked with this distinctive label, providing undeniable evidence that the part has been rigorously tested under hot engine conditions. We are the only company in the entire world that rigorously tests every single unit before delivering it to the customer. That way you can be absolutely confident that everything will function perfectly without any issues. Remember, if you hear a rattling noise during your engine startup, it could potentially indicate that the problem might be associated with the VVT pulley. The cost of purchasing original pulleys for this engine is 1,000 USD or more. Henker developed a cost-effective solution. Two VVT pulleys priced at half the cost with a significantly reduced weight for enhanced performance. In a simplified design, improved durability, and specifically engineered for motorsport performance needs. In addition, each and every wheel is subjected to rigorous hydraulic testing with hot oil before being delivered to the customer, guaranteeing you'll enjoy a completely seamless and trouble-free driving experience. For more detailed information about Mihenker's current timing kits offer, have a look at the description below. I also encourage you to subscribe to our channel, as there will be many more videos coming soon about VVT phasers and the common issues associated with them.